Hi, and welcome to our recorded structured advisement workshops. My name is Lauren Epps, and I will be guiding you through this process. This video will be an overview of the ePortfolio, what sections and elements are in an ePortfolio, as well as an overview of our content guide and rubric resources. So where we'll start is on the GLD website. If you go to sc.edu slash GLD, this is the homepage that you will see. This website has all of the information that you'll need to get started with your ePortfolio. Where I will point you to first is our ePortfolio tab. This page in particular has a lot of information about um, the methods for completing an ePortfolio, as well as the important resources that you need to know to be successful. So there are two important guiding documents for an ePortfolio. The first is our ePortfolio content guide, and we'll look at that in a second. The second one is the GLD rubric. This is what we are graded on for an ePortfolio. The ePortfolio is the one piece of GLD that you have to pass to earn a GLD when you graduate. The passing score for an ePortfolio is 34 out of 48 points. So you can look at the rubric and we'll look at it more in depth later but use this as a guiding document as you build your ePortfolio to make sure it will meet the expectations that your reviewers will be scoring on. Next, we have several sample ePortfolios that you can use as a guide or just for inspiration. I'll show you one example just to get you started in helping to think about the ePortfolio. So this ePortfolio is from a couple of years ago. Um, it was a global learning student. He was in the global learning pathway. And while it looks customized to this student, every ePortfolio has the same major sections. Um, so some ePortfolios will have a home screen kind of like this. Some will just start with the first required section, which is the about me section. So you can see this student um, includes his name, his contact information, and then talks about himself, which is all the About Me section is about. Um, so the student gives his name, his major, um, his minor, when he's graduating and what his plans are after graduation. He talks about his GLD pathway and his experiences that he uses in his ePortfolio. And then sort of a sneak preview about the rest of the ePortfolio. And you can see on the side, he's included some pictures to make it um, a little more unique to him. The next section is the key insights, and this is the bulk of the ePortfolio. We generally tell students that an ePortfolio from start to finish is about 50 to 60 hours worth of work. Most of that work will be spent in this key insights section. So I'll show you one example. There are three key insight essays total, um, but this is the first one. And in a key insight essay, we ask students to make connections between what they've done in the classroom and what they've done outside of the classroom and how they learned or grew or were transformed through those experiences. So for this student, uh, he was a public health major. He talks about his experiences in the global learning pathway and how he was impacted by his experiences um, and how that will help him in the future as a public health professional. So he talks about maintaining an unbiased view as the major lesson or the takeaway in this key insight. And he learned that through his course in Epidemiology 410. Um, and he learned about the different determinants of health. That was a concept that he learned in that course. He provides an artifact, his study guide. Um, and, and every key insight will ask you to provide documentation or artifacts from both the course and outside of the classroom. So you can see the description there. He also gives um, another artifact that comes from his beyond the classroom activities where he would tra traveled abroad to the Czech Republic. And then you can see down at the end, he provides um, more of a closer look um, or an examination of what he learned through those experiences and how he saw them come together and how he will use this unbiased view lesson uh, in the future as a professional. Down at the bottom, you can see these artifacts are attached here. You can actually scroll through the documents that he submitted. Um, so that's a really neat way to do that in your key insights as well. Just to give you another example, like I said, there are three key insights, but they all follow the same template. 
In this key insight, again, tied to global learning, his pathway, uh, he talks about his study abroad experience again, um, but he talks about it in a different way this time and in a different experience while he was abroad. So he learned about going through the basics of language and having to use problem solving skills to communicate while he was in Prague. We have another artifact, which was a, a reflection that he wrote while he was abroad. And then he took a course um, while he was abroad, a psychology course called Alternative Culture. And he talks about what he learned in that course. And again, you can see the artifacts of the notes that he took from that class. And then at the end, again, you can see the lessons learned or the takeaways um, for that key insight, really the impact of what he learned through those experiences and how he saw those things come together to play out in his life and his future. And then the artifacts at the bottom. So that's what a key insight is all about. Where we ask you to apply those key insights and where graduation with leadership distinction gets its name is this leadership section. And this is where we want you to, to really think critically about an issue or a problem in your field or in your community and how you could address it um, in, in real time, really um, focused on, on what you have learned now and the expertise that you have now as an almost college graduate. So in the leadership section, you would think about an issue and give us some details about that issue. What is it? Why, is it, uh, why does it exist? Um, what are some of the statistics even that can back it up? And then what is your solution to address that problem? Um, what can you realistically do to make a difference in that area? And we want you to justify it through your key insights and what you've learned through your experiences, whether that's your courses or your beyond the classroom experiences. How are you an expert in the room to propose this solution? So you can see this um, student's leadership section is all about HIV and AIDS. I mentioned he was a public health major. So he talks about this issue specific to Richland County, South Carolina. And then his solution was talking about testing um, and creating a testing bus that he could go out to rural areas and um, test people for HIV. Yours does not have to look like this necessarily, but this student chose um, to tie it into each of his three key insights and to put it in a nice chart for us. Um, so you could absolutely do something like this to show that justification through your key insights of why you're qualified to recommend this solution. And then what is your plan? The third section of the leadership section is this intervention or this implementation plan. Um, and so you might choose to do it in paragraph form like this student, or you might choose to have it in bullets or in a chart or numbered list of what you would do step by step to detailed um, with details of what you would do to implement this plan. Again, we're not asking you to actually go out and do it. We just want you to think critically about what you would do if you were to leave your house or your apartment tomorrow um, and what you could do to go out and make a difference in this area. Again, this is very um, extra above and beyond, but this student even included a timeline, a budget overview, and an evaluation plan for how he would know that it was successful, how he would measure success in this project. We do recommend having some references if you um, cite sources or cite information and data within your leadership section. It is a great idea um, not to plagiarize, right? But to have references back to where you pulled that information from. So that is an overview of all of the sections of a GLD ePortfolio and where you're headed in this process. I, I told you it was a lot of work. I hope that you're not overwhelmed, um, but I, I also want to show you those resources um, and the guides for getting to this finished product. This is the GLD content guide for ePortfolios. As you can see, it is a great guiding resource. It is about 20 pages long, full of information on how to write each section of the ePortfolio. So it goes through a definition of each section, the about me, the key insights, and the leadership, just like we just looked at. It talks about artifacts, and then there's a copy of the GLD rubric at the end as well.
I recommend reading through all of this before you get started writing an ePortfolio to make sure that you really understand what it is that your reviewers are going to be looking for. So you can see the key insights. We've got some guiding questions that you can go through. Information about artifacts, what they are, what's expected, um, notes on photos and redactions, even how to include them and how to attach them to your website. The leadership section, again, what to think about, what to include here. And then we get into the rubric. So the rubric, as I mentioned, is a 48 total point rubric. We're asking that you get 34 points. So that is the passing score, 34 out of 48 points, which for most students means getting mostly threes. Um, threes is meets expectations. That is successful in our eyes. Um, so you want to shoot for threes in every element. And that would be about a 36 score, which as you remember, should be passing, right? If you'll note, most of the points come from the key insights section. So that's this blue section right here of the rubric. Six of our elements or half of your points come from key insights. So really spend time there because that's where all of the points are gonna come from, the ones that matter. Um, we do have some points for professionalism and formatting. You can read about that. There are some points for the about me section that, that should be um, relatively simple to get. And then there are three elements dedicated to the leadership section down here in red. So you can see the realistic issue or problem, clear recommendations and solutions, and a reasonable, clear plan for implementation. That's what you're striving for. We've got some key terms in here, um, just as a glossary to refer back to as you're writing. If you read a term in the content guide and you're not sure what we're referring to, check out this glossary. It can be really helpful. And then in another video, I will go through these activities, but know that there are instructions in the content guide for each of our activities, both for the key insights and for the leadership section. So this is another helpful way um, to read through, to understand what's expected and to help you process your information to get it from your brain into an ePortfolio. So that's all of the content guide. You can see that that document here. And then the last thing I wanna mention, just as you think ahead to the ePortfolio um, in this overview video, is how to actually build your website. We don't provide a ton of resources for that. Um, we are not technical support. We are not experts in that way, but we do provide some recommendations on website platforms. These are all free options for you. We don't recommend going out and buying a domain name unless you have one already for another purpose. But these are our four free options that we see often from students that should be relatively easy um, to plug and play. Copy and paste your content into a template that you like, and you don't have to spend a ton of time on formatting and background or any kind of coding. So Wix, Weebly, Google Sites, and Squarespace are the four that we most often see. I will say um, Wix and Weebly are probably the easiest if you are a beginner to website building. Google Sites and Squarespace require a little bit more knowledge on the front end. They're not quite as user-friendly. So those are, are your options. We recommend um, looking at YouTube videos or, or consulting a friend if you have a resource that you can use there as you actually build the ePortfolio website on your platform. This is not until the very end of the process though. So um, keep in mind, you're gonna want to build your content first, your essays and the, the words that you'll be writing and then transfer it into your website at the end. That's the end of this overview video. Check out our next video for more details about the key insights section.